What is up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Tuesday morning to you and welcome to this devotion series. We have just begun through the Gospel of Luke. If you're joining me uh, for the first time, you may want to pause and watch yesterday as we began, or you can pause and just go read ahead. Read Luke chapter 1. Now, Luke chapter 1 is really long. It's got 80 verses in it, but it goes back really into the origin of this whole thing. Only Matthew and Luke tell really what we call the Christmas story, but Luke even goes back further than that and actually tells you about the birth of John the Baptist, and that's the story for today. It goes like this. In verse in verse 5, it says that in the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division His wife was Elizabeth, who was also a descendant of Aaron. They're just establishing, hey, they're from the tribe of Levi. They're in the priestly order. He goes, both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's decrees and commands blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they're both very old. Well, an angel shows up, and of course, we in the Bible, we're accustomed to supernatural and special, miraculous even birth. And so for them to be old is just not a big deal for the Lord. And so he he shows up, the angel Lord shows up and says, you're going to have a son. Your wife is going to give birth. You're going to name him John, and he is going to be a mighty prophet. Gives some some more instructions. And Zechariah does not take this well. I think he's still in shock. He's just not sure. This is a crazy experience. And so Zechariah's response is, I think the main thing we want to pay attention to. He goes, how can I be sure of this. I'm an old man, and my wife is well along in years. And so he's got a legitimate beef. He's doing the math here. Well, the angel responds and says, well, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I've been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news, and now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come to truth. Well, which will come true at their appointed time. I find this to be so fascinating. Let me give you three thoughts here. Number one is this. It's just helpful to know as a Bible reader that sometimes there's more than one person named John in the story. This is the story of John the Baptist and his birth. Later, when Jesus is forming his own group of disciples, he goes and finds James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and he invites them in. That's a different John. That John is, of course, there at the foot of the cross. That John went on uh, uh, to, to write the Gospel of John, the later New Testament books, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, as well as we believe the book of Revelation. So it's a different John, if that'll just help you out here. This is John the Baptist, who actually ends up being the cousin of Jesus, and this is his birth story. So just some little clarity there, but the the spiritual implication for us, and this is what I wrestle with, why did the angel silence Zachariah? Isn't that a little bit overdoing it? Like, did you really have to mute him for nine months or whatever? And and so I'm like, why did you do that? And this is the answer I kind of am settling on as of right now. I think that you could say it like this, is that God doesn't want me getting in my own way. For Zechariah, he's like, I'm going to silence you because I don't want you getting in your own way. You've got some doubt and negativity, and, and I'm just afraid that you might just keep talking that way, and you might share that with your wife, and then you might share it with your friends and your neighbors, and it's just, then you're going to get a spiral maybe of doubt, disbelief, and negativity, and I don't want you to do that. So I'm just going to silence you so that this thing seems like, oh my gosh, what a great big deal. See, Here's the thing about us. Sometimes we have faith in our heart and we feel really good. We should speak that. Because when we speak our words, um, really we're just solidifying what we believe in our heart. Well, the opposite is true though. If, If we find ourselves filled with fear, doubt, worry, discouragement, disbelief, and then we start speaking those things, we're solidifying those things in our heart. Remember, the power of death and life are in the tongue. And so if you've got all those let's just say deadly feelings, toxic feelings, deadly emotions, and we start speaking them, we're going to make them stronger in our life. So we got to be very, very careful. Like how is our speech pattern? Are our words filled with hope, faith, and love, or doubt, discouragement, and negativity? What's your speech pattern? Here's an even better question you may want to ask yourself. Most of us have an inner dialogue. Every once in a while, like somebody says, no, I don't do that. But most of us, we have an inner dialogue where we kind of talk to ourselves. Psychologists call it your self-talk. 
How is your self-talk? Because again, you have these feelings and these emotions and sometimes you can just have an internal dialogue where you're really mean to yourself, you're really negative, you're really critical of yourself. And I'm telling you, that is toxic. I, I love what David said. There's a, there's a point in the life of King David where he's so discouraged. Everybody's against him, including his best friends. And he just pulls away and it says this, it says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. See, sometimes you got to use your words to build yourself up and to encourage yourself. And so don't let negative words really solidify negativity in your heart. The third thing is this. I just love that God still shows up anyway, that God's going to do what God's going to do. And I would say it like this if you're taking notes, God's promises are bigger than our responses. So sometimes I'm responding to what God's wanting to do and I'm being negative. You know what? Sometimes God's just merciful and he keeps, you know, just being patient with me and it's going to come to pass. And so regardless of my response, good or bad, God is going to do. God is faithful, not because I am, but because that's who he is. So be encouraged today. Speak life. Encourage yourself at times. Make sure you're solidifying the faith in your heart and trust God that his promise is bigger than our response. Church, I love you so much. God bless you. And I will see you tomorrow.